okay dear students let us see how are we going to do this question an insulated tube is filled with large number n of lead spheres each of mass m okay so there are like uh, this is a tube and there are so many of the lead spheres that are packed there and uh, uh, the, these are n number of spheres and m is the individual mass so the total mass can be taken as n multiplied by m now the tube is inverted s times so that the spheres completely fall through an average distance of l each time so it's like uh, done like this and each time all the spheres they're traveling the distance of l and so s times they have uh, inverted like this is like one two three four so each time is calculated so the temperature of the sphere is measured before and after the inversions the resultant change in temperature is delta t what is the specific heat capacity of the lead very good so what is happening is we are inverting this uh, thing like this s times and overall these molecules these spheres are falling and some kind of energy is getting converted into another kind of energy so we have to identify like which two energies are here um, related with each other energy cannot be created nor destroyed obviously heat energy has come from something from some, some from some other kind of form what is that now that is gravitational potential energy so what is the formula for the gravitational potential energy m is the mass that has fallen through the height edge so what is the total mass n into m is the total mass g will be taken as gravity and what is the total height for which the masses have fallen now in one in one reverse inversion the distance covered is l in second it becomes l by 2 uh, 2l and in third it becomes 3l 4l 5l 6l and it was inverted as time so what is the total height from which they have fallen that can be taken as s into l because s times it is traveling the distance l this is the total potential energy now and how what is the formula for the heat that was absorbed so that is mc delta t t t can be taken in kelvin or in absolute terms also so you can write capital t as well as small t whenever we write small t generally it is degree c and when we write capital t generally it is kelvin so now what is the mass mass will be n into mc into delta t now these two equations have to be equated with each other heat lost is equal to heat gained okay energy lost sorry so we have this thing now n into m g s l is equal to n into m c delta t n into m n into m gets cancelled out we want to find c that is specific heat capacity so keeping c here delta t is taken to the other side it will be g s l divided by delta t is equal to c so this is what we are getting s g l divided by delta t so now we have to see the options and we will see which option is correct s g l divided by delta t i'm going to move this thing a little bit and SGL by delta T, yes, B is the correct answer for this question. This is how we do this. I believe things should be pretty clear to you now. And this is a very good question, isn't it? Okay, so my dear students, this is Professor Varun. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Share the YouTube channel with all your friends. All the best.